right, guys, uh, just a quick announcement. Uh, we are starting a new season for the uh, gameplay and stuff like that. So I do do the date gameplay. I've actually made a blog post all about that recently. I'll link the blog post in the description of the video as well as the uh, season poll. Uh, and I'll be coming out with a video today, which I'll add a card uh, to the video just so you guys can see the different types of games that are up for option for the thing. I'll just be going over the Steam pages for each one of them. Now, uh, we covered the car, basically this car, a um, couple of days ago. Uh, it was a little bit different uh, before, but uh, what I wanted to do was add some gas and stuff to this. We're going to be making this kind of like a little micro, micro series for the car itself. Now, I'm not sure why the textures are all a little bit darker. I'll have to play around with that. I did work on it a little bit, but it seems a little bit too dark, so I'll mess around with that a little bit more but i did add a efficient uh fuel system to the car so we'll be covering that today and then i'll be creating a playlist for this particular uh tutorial series and i might as well make it a series so we'll be covering some other mechanics from your suggestions like um turning and gears and stuff like that uh but i i wanted to get the gas out of the way so if we try driving it right Right now, it's not going to work um, for the sole fact that there's no gas in it. So if we were to open it up, uh, we'll just take a look at the data and then we'll get the entities data. And we have a couple forged data uh, values, fuel capacity. So this is measured in gallons. So how many gallons the tank can basically fill up to uh, fuel efficiency so basically from what Google says uh, an average car is about 12 gallons for what its tank capacity is uh, the fuel efficiency for an average car is about well you had to adjust it in milliliters or uh, millimeters I think so so I can't remember uh, but it's basically the percent on how far the car actually goes and stuff like that so this is basically how much it consumes uh, yeah I think it's milliliters so uh, basically it was originally in liters but I had to convert it into something Minecraft can use for blocks mm. and then use it in the script so that uh, value is milliliters where the other one is gallons and the value for an average car is 0 0.041. And then we can see here we have no fuel. So fuel is at zero. So how do we fuel it up? We just grab an item. And I created a couple different types of items. One is like a bucket where you can replace the item in your hand. Where the other one is basically like coal. And you can just consume the item. So I'll provide both of those procedures. But if we right click on it. Whoop. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Oops. <laughs> Problem with recording at Minecraft. Alright, so I'm not sure if we actually got fuel in that or not. <laughs> Just take a look at the fuel. Uh, we'll clean that up and then we'll take a look again. So, yes, we have 12 gallons of fuel. So, that's great. Alright, so if we start driving around... We can kind of see that, well, in just a second, we'll take a look, but we'll go around uh, driving. And not sure if I can, whoop, there we go. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I'll just spawn in a new car and give it some fuel. That one's pretty much toast, so. Okay, we better get out of there. So we'll just, just drive around a little bit and then we'll take a look at the fuel efficiency so how much fuel it's got in the tank okay let's get out and let's take a look at this entity we need to replace the id now and i need to be looking at it i think that has to do with the hitbox but okay so let's see how much fuel we have we have uh 4.4 
um, milliliter or gallons left in our tank. So that's how much we have for driving left. So once it reaches zero, it will basically um, stop the vehicle. And as you can see, we just stopped. We ran out of fuel. So you'd have to fuel it up again. And I, I keep placing buckets. Maybe lava's not a really good idea. But <laughs> uh, the coal would have probably been better for recording. But yeah, so that's basically the fuel. Let's go into the procedures and we'll take a quick look. So I'm going to also provide the workspace. I'm not sure if I provided the workspace last time. I think it was just a general tutorial on how to create the vehicle. So I'll make sure to provide the workspace. And as we progress with certain things, I'll try to keep the things organized for things like the fuel system and the entities and stuff like that. So the right click procedure is actually a global procedure, which is just a regular procedure with a global trigger. So uh, what we have done here is we're using the player right clicks on entity for the block. And then what we're doing is we're getting the uh, forge tag uh, for our car. So we basically assigned a tag that um, for the tag itself, we go under tags and then entity and then we can see vehicle slash car. It's under the forge namespace. You can also put it under your mod namespace, but you'll have to update the tags in the thing. And then it's under an entity and then we're putting our car in that group. So basically what this will do is it will allow us to target any entity and allow us to um, use fuel f across all different versions because it's using the like all different mods so uh fuel can be used for any of the vehicles as long as it's in this particular uh group so i used vehicle and then slash car so any cars would basically fall into this group here so things like gasoline might be for cars where diesel might be for semi trucks or something like that right so you would have different types of uh, vehicle classes and you might have different fuel for them. So basically what we're doing is we're just targeting the car which is in the car class. So that's basically that part and then we have two tags. Uh, basically this one here is uh, just targeting uh, the vehicle class again under the forge namespace. You can update the forge version and replace it with your namespace for your mod and it'll do the exact same thing just it'll be separate from um, the rest of the mods that use the forge namespace. So then what we're doing is we're putting it under the vehicle again and then we're going fuel and then we're typing the type of the fuel it is. In this case I just wanted to basically specify lava buckets so I put lava there and then what we're doing is we're canceling out the event that way we're not going to get into the car so that's important if we don't want to actually drive the car right away. And then what we're doing is if the player is not in creative mode, then what we're going to do is we're, um, so basically survival mode, adventure mode, um, theoretically spectator mode, but you can't actually obtain items in spectator mode. So uh, basically adventure and survival. Then what we're doing is we're basically just going to set the main hand item to a empty bucket and that will basically exclude creative players so they have a constant supply of lava and they don't need to worry about um, the consumption of the bucket itself so it's just easier for doing multiple things in creative and then what we're doing is we're going to set the fuel variable uh, which is the MBT for the vehicle and then we're going to basically set it to the capacity of the vehicle so that we'll fill it up all the way up to the of uh, top of the how many how the complete capacity of the vehicle so 12 gallons in this case we're just playing a bucket sound for when we right click on the entity so the other version is basically just the consumption version like for things like coal uh, this would be another option that you could basically do um, it's a little bit different the only difference is that we're removing the same item in the main hand. We're subtracting it by one rather than setting the exact value and item. So that's the only difference. I'll make sure to provide both in two separate procedures. All right, so that part is done. Uh, there are only two other procedures that we need to cover. So the other tag is for the other item, which is coal. Again, coal is under the fuel coal namespace, and then you would put your um 
fuel like the forge namespace items and then your coal items in there so that's the only other one uh you can basically add gas or diesel uh whatever you want to run your vehicle on in those kind of format keep it similar so other mods can easily tap into your mod all right so then we have some minor changes to the entity um first major change is I added the uh, death sound and hurt sound so that you might have heard those difference I've also increased the shadow size to one that gives it a bigger round area for the shadow and I've set the creative uh, texture for the um, the egg itself as far as movement speed I've dropped that down to uh, 0.25 this won't matter too much in the near future but uh, this is just to control the speed of the entity generally it would be at three so it's at 0 0.25 now and I think that was all the changes that I actually did outside of add two different procedures which is one is on internal entity spawn that's where we're going to be setting our variables for the fuel capacity uh, fuel efficiency and fuel so that's where that one is going to be going and in the future we'll be using it for basically expanding uh, certain variables that the car might use for other events and stuff like that and then right here for the update tick what we're doing is we're going to or tick update they call it uh, is we're going to basically set the fuel consumption script for that so we might actually branch this off into separate procedures in the future but at the moment we don't need to do that so I'll be covering this one first since it's easier and all we're doing is we're basically setting the capacity for the fuel capacity this is in gallons so 12 gallons and then what we're doing is we're setting the fuel efficiency which is in see if I can remember is it milliliters yeah milliliters so this is in milliliters um, I did the math uh, from what I can tell for the distance it's about 4.1 liters per 100 miles so I had to basically calculate how many per meter and then it just was a ridiculously small amount so I went with milliliters to kind of bump that up so we could actually use it with a number of blocks and stuff like that so um, basically use milliliters for how much your average fuel consumption is going to be so this is what the fuel consumption is going to be using and then if you want to basically spawn a car with fuel then you can set this number to a higher number I wouldn't go over your fuel capacity though uh, just because there isn't really any need to go over it but um, the uh, fuel script will actually automatically fuel it up to the, the capacity so try to keep it within your your fuel tank capacity itself but uh, if you want it to be fueled by the player after it basically is placed down then what you want to do is you want to just set this to zero and then it will be empty so that's basically that one and I've added a whole bunch of notes through all these so the other one is the tick update it's a little bit longer but I did the best that I could for the math and stuff like that. So there was a few different parts. All the configuration that you need is right at the top here. So you would basically put your MBT fuel. So this is the fuel name for your MBT tag and then the fuel efficiency for your MBT tag here. Everything else is taking care of variables. When you import it, it's going to basically generate all the local variables that it needs and then it's going to calculate everything automatically so what does it actually do so let's cover that so we know these are the settings for it if you want to set the offset the distance then any value above one is going to basically multiply how far the vehicle can go um, based on the fuel efficiency so you notice that we only were able to drive a little bit around if we increase this number to two we'll be able to go double the distance uh, with the amount of fuel that we have so that is taken in consideration whoop uh, right on this part right here where it's dividing by the value uh, fuel distance offset so if you need to adjust it so it the car drives longer then you can do that based on this value here uh, in some cases it might just be easier to set it to two or three or something all right so and then we have um, 
when the entity is not being written or the fuel value is zero. So if the view, fuel value is zero or the entity is not being written, what we want to do is we want to set the entity in a cobweb. Uh, we're going to be basically making the entity so it doesn't uh, move anywhere so players can't actually drive it and stuff like that. So this is what this part does. And then we're going to put in a movement vector. We're going to set the movement vector for X and Z to zero and then just set the entity velocity to the entity velocity uh, part right here. This will basically make it so it can fall downwards and it won't have like a static uh, value uh, even though that we're setting the position down below. So we're also giving it slowness which will basically is maxed out at 255 and we're applying that for 10 ticks and we're just not hide or hiding the particles and other uh, status effects. Then what we're doing is we're going to test uh, for two different conditions. If there is a not a block below the block or below the entity, um, basically two pixels below the entity. Um, if there isn't one with a solid face on the surface, so things like um, grass, uh, dirt, um, planks, all those will basically count as a solid surface. Uh, Stairs will probably count as a not solid surface, so they'll basically fall through. Uh, this is also testing if the block is a fluid. So basically what we're doing here is we're going to make sure that uh, if the player is not writing the entity and the entity is uh, not... Uh, has no fuel or anything like that, one of the two, then we want it to basically fall down. So all this up here would basically prevent the entity from basically falling down. So it would just stay in the air if they got out mid-flight. So we want it to kind of drop too, right? So what we're doing is we're testing if there is things that it can actually go through like uh, grass or um, certain objects that won't deal too much damage and then it's going to basically make the entity fall through that area and once it hits the ground then what it's going to do is just make sure that it doesn't go any further unless there's a change in the area where the entity can actually fall through so that parts the stationary part and then what we have down here is if the player is riding the entity and the fuel capacity or the fuel is greater than zero. Then what we're doing is we're creating another condition. This time we're testing if the velocity is for X and Z or one Z, X or Z is not zero. So that's what the little equal sign with the slash through it is basically not zero. So any value that is not zero, then what we're going to do is if one of those values is something different than zero, we're going to set two variables, fuel and fuel efficiency from our MBT var variables. And then we're going to start calculating the uh, velocity and how much fuel consumption we need to use. All right, so the fuel, basically the fuel, ex the fuel, ex uh, I can't really say it today. Um, the fuel consumption is going to be calculated through a means of the fuel efficiency uh, actually, I think I started somewhere else. Um, so let's let's see here. I think that's the inner part. So we have fuel efficiency multiplied by, and then we're getting the value of both x and z. We're dividing that by two, so we get a solid number. Uh, because otherwise, if the velocity is actually um, both maxed out at 1, then what this would basically do is it would have a value of 2. So what we're doing is we're dividing that by 1, and then we have a value of 1, right? So any value between that is it's going to basically go ahead and set the velocity and divide it by 2. So it's combining the both values. We're using absolute to basically uh, get the negative value. So if the velocity is in the negatives, uh, this happens when you're going in opposite direction, uh, I think north and west for velocity. So we want to make sure that it's a solid number all around. So we're using absolute to basically get that number, regardless if it's a positive or a negative. Um, 
Once we do that though, what we can do is we can basically add these two values together and then divide it by two. So when we're dividing it by two again, we're going to make sure that we can actually use the script and it doesn't go over a certain amount. This part right up here is doing the exact same thing, but we're testing if it's over one. The reason for that is we're multiplying the value of this by <clears throat> uh, the uh, actual thing. So our fuel efficiency is how much we're actually going to be draining the vehicle, and we're multiplying that by the, about the uh, amount of velocity we're actually driving with. So once we've done that, what we're doing is we're going to divide that by the offset. So basically that will make the vehicle go farther uh, based on how much fuel it actually has. And then we're subtracting that or subtracting our fuel. We're getting the value and then we're subtracting it by the fuel that we have. So then we're just basically setting the value of the fuel to the fuel variable. So that, that part is a little bit hard to grasp but once we get that part done it's easy to kind of see this part so with this part it's the exact same thing the only difference is we're adding plus one so the reason why we're doing that is in some cases um, if the value is not equal to one then it's not going to divide properly and the math will actually increase the value rather than decrease it um, so it's hard to explain, but different operations like multiplying and division will actually have a different effect based on if your your value. So, for example, if I basically divide by two, then that value will go lower. But if I multiply by two, then it's going to go higher. So hopefully that makes kind of sense. It's different on how it works. So I had to make a condition. But basically the only difference on this is because it's uh, less than one, we want to make it go smaller. Uh, so we're going to divide it by a one point something or other to basically make the value of the fuel uh, less expensive if they're going under the full uh, one value for the movement speed. So exactly the same thing, it just adds the extra one and then it makes sure that it's divided by the distance and then it basically runs the script so it works that way i don't know why um, i played around with the calculator for a couple hours trying to figure out the math equation this seems to work i i honestly don't know why but <laughs> it does okay so now that part i tried to explain that if it doesn't make sense i'm not a math magician i actually really suck at math so i can't really explain it any better but um Lastly, what we're doing is we're just going to make sure that if the fuel is less than zero after it's calculated the fuel amount, then what we're going to do is it's going to set the fuel to zero. So if it goes over the amount of the fuel compat like the fuel that has that the fuel that's in the vehicle, then it's going to make sure that it just goes to zero and it doesn't be go into the negative numbers. All right, so that's the only procedure. And like I said, we'll probably branch this one off into its own uh, script, and then we'll use the procedure in the update tick later on. But uh, for now, what it can do is it can just go into the cars update tick. Any changes in the near future for this will basically be added and notified. Like I'll make sure to make a note of it in the video that we update with. Most likely we will need to use the tick update for certain things, but uh, in the meantime, uh, some other things that we might want to consider to actually take an account for is the actual speed of the entity. Uh, this will be controlled by the actual gears of how fast the entity can go. Uh, this will vary depending on the speed and everything like that. I still need to figure out how to get that part working. I don't know anything about cars really, so I'm just kind of doing my best to kind of make it as realistic as possible. But um, I'm pretty happy with the fuel efficiency, like the fuel mechanics for this. It seems to work really well, and it just took me a couple hours to put together. So outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.